Hello, and thank you for trying the physics cutter. Uh, the main point of this uh, this um, this assets is to be able to place objects around by following physics. I noticed that uh, this was something that I really wished to have while creating my scene, and as far as I can tell, there is no other uh, assets that can do that. Uh, normally, you can scatter objects around, but they are just going to stand still. Uh, they are going to intersect one another. Uh, they're not going to be placed one on top of the other nicely because they just don't follow physics because in the editor you cannot easily do that. Uh, with my with my tool I hope to uh, basically solve this problem. Uh, with this tool you can you, you just be able to basically scatter objects around by following physics and on top of that you can also create some nice effects like explosion, black hole or apply some uh, some forces to, to the objects. Um, okay, let's start to check how those work. Uh, first thing you can open it from the Windows panel and the first thing you want to do after you open is to drag and drop some of the objects in the, in the window and you can just start scattering around a little bit as you can see uh, so in this way when you scatter some objects just on the top of one another they're going to explode uh, because the rigid body is collapsing so what you can do is to select the global setting first of all and increase the vertical offset. In this case, all the objects are going to be scattered with a certain vertical setting. So it means that uh, they are going to be uh, scattered nicely, still following physics. Um, you can change the different variables, as you can see, different uh, rotations around the three axis or uh, the scale as well. Uh, you can apply this option to the global one or to the individual uh, objects um, and you can also select specific objects to scatter so you don't really need to uh, scatter the three of them but just for example uh, the scattering the cube around if you want uh, and again uh, this will all follow physics concepts what can you do then is to uh, scatter but without following the physics so disable and check the physics scatter on top and you can just basically place objects uh, mid there without following any physics rules they are not going to fall down Next, we can see the concept for root. All these objects that you scatter are going to be placed in the root container that you can see in the hierarchy. You can create a new root. You can uh, mark a different game object as a root so that all the objects that you create are going to be childed to that object. And I think you can do is to add the rigid body in the root as I just done now so that you basically you apply the rigid body to all objects in the root. Uh, in this case, making them fall. Uh, see if you get a root now you can just see the other objects going in there uh, you can go back to this one and mark it as a root again so the object is going to be childed to this one you can delete all the objects here and mark the other one as a root okay now uh, this dropping flux is just decide establish basically how fast it's going to drop the object, so you can change that to uh, yeah to be faster or slower. Okay, now let's take a look at something quite cool, is the effects. You can add three different effects with the, the several parameters and you can get quite a big range of effects with that. So first of all, let's see the graphics. This The sphere will uh, indicate the size of the effect. You can change the basically the radius, the vertical offset or the power that's for the explosion. And the explosion is just going to simulate an explosion in the scene, as you can see. Yeah scattering around and making them explode. So you can basically simulate some kind of uh, physics effects in the scene without having to place these objects around uh, manually. You just 
can add this explosion. You can make a very big explosion by changing the range, as you can see. Or a very big, very small explosion if you want. And of course, in this case, the vertical offset is so high that the red is not going to hit any uh, object. So let's try this one. This is the simple force object. It's just going to push the object towards our direction. You can see that there is a green line coming from the center of the uh, of the sphere, and this line is, is going to indicate where basically the direction of the force applied. And this can be actually quite nice, especially if we apply some uh, uh, some vertical direction as yeah as you can i'm going to show it soon you can of course change the the power uh, so the force basically applied to this axis or yeah as you can see now you can just make objects levitate and when you want to do that you are going to uh, see soon by deleting the uh, the rigid body now let's see the black hole is probably the coolest one uh this is just going to create some kind of sort of black hole effect in the uh, position of the center of the sphere uh, yeah, now this is a little bit too powerful. Let's put it down a bit. Um, this, for example, is too weak. You did find the right, the right one for your object. And this is perfect. See? Now it's going to go around a little bit, and then it's just going to collapse to one big blob in the middle. And that looks pretty cool. Uh, there is a parameter here, the modifier. Uh, this uh, part of the question inside the, the is part of the black hole equation. You can just play around with that. I know that the value of two is more or less fine. If you change it, you are going to basically change the physical character, uh, the physic the state of the black hole. So you can get different effects. For example, you can get something com uh, continuously fluctuating around the center. Um, so let's see how does it work the all rigid body or only in the, in the container if you get a new root and then you select on you select only uh only in root container the effect is going to be to be applied only in objects in the root container as you can see now so for example all the other objects with the rigid body they are not going to be affected by by the effect uh this doesn't mean that they don't have a rigid body anymore, they're just not going to be affected by the, the, the explosion of the black hole or whatever. Okay, now let's take a look at something cool, which is how to use the... how to use the delete rigid body and add rigid body. So, what you can do, um, what you can do in this case, is to, for example, have an explosion, and then in the mid, in between of the explosion, you can uh, delete rigid body by pressing the shortcut Shift uh, Shift A, and you are going to create a nice effect that you can actually use in the scene. And this is the main reason for using the effects at all. Uh, let's see now. Yes, and now I just stopped it with Shift Alt. I didn't uh, Shift A. Sorry, I didn't need to actually press the button the shortcut is much more convenient in this case and uh, and basically now these objects they don't have a rigid body anymore so you can just use it in your scene um, so I just put a um, first person controller here uh, just activate it and uh, let me move it just a second Yeah, uh, so now if I start the scene, you will see that they, they that's exactly how they look in the, in the scene. And I think this is quite a cool effect, and you can use it quite a lot, uh, especially with the explosion. Now I'm going to show you the black hole effect, I think that's uh, full of potential. So this is the black hole effect. Uh, you can... this for getting a different kind of visual in the, in the scene, and yeah, I used the same technique as before. I was doing the uh, black hole effect, and then midway, I press Shift A so that I will delete all the rigid body in the root, and that's the effect that I got. I think it's pretty nice. And of course, in the then at this point, you can press again the Shift uh, Shift 
S and this is going to add a rigid body to all object, objects in the root, uh, meaning that 